Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to day three performance webinar, performance management webinar, and I'm Rizwan Mania. So I hope you people are good. And the previous two days uh, would have helped you in raising your confidence. And yes, uh, will give you much more uh, confidence uh, for your examination. So day three is uh, decision making. Decision making is one of the core areas and uh, you can see we have relevant costing, linear programming, CVP analysis, risk and uncertainty and pricing. So first of all, uh, I will be starting uh, with the very important area and that is relevant costing. So let's first start with relevant costing because relevant costing is important for examination. Now, uh, what is a relevant cost? So as we are covering decision making <clears throat> and this is short term decision making. So uh, in short term decision making, uh, we use relevant costing for decision making purpose. Uh, so you need to remember that <clears throat> what is a relevant cost? So it's very important to understand relevant cost uh, is basically a future cash flow. It's a future cash flow that will arise uh, when you take a when you take a decision. So any future cash flow that results directly that results directly because of the decision is known as a relevant cash flow. So you need to remember uh, for cash flow to be relevant for cash flow to be relevant. It is important that it should be a future cash flow. So I hope this is clear. Now uh, there are two things uh, whenever you need to decide whether a cash flow is relevant or not. So it's very simple. It's very simple. Uh, the first thing is uh, for any cash flow to be a relevant cash flow, it should be incremental cost or an incremental income. So any incremental cost or income is known as a relevant cash flow. So there are so many examples uh, of incremental. Uh, for example, uh, if you <clears throat> Uh, are deciding uh, whether you need to buy a shoe or not. So if you will buy a shoe, so the cost of that shoe uh, is an incremental cost. Okay, so the cost of the shoe is an incremental cost. So if you go for a certain decision, so because of this, any cost that arises uh, is known as incremental cost or any income that arises is known as incremental income. So definitely I'll give you examples of uh, these when you move towards the question. Uh, another. Thing is opportunity cost. For a cost to be relevant, it could either be incremental or I'm writing or or it could be opportunity cost. So if it is an opportunity cost that would again be classified as an incremental cost and we all know what is an opportunity cost. Opportunity cost is basically the cost of <coughs> second best alternative foregone. Uh, the sacrifice that we are doing. That is known as opportunity cost. For example, we are doing a job of 100,000 and we got an another opportunity uh, of 1 lakh 20,000. So keeping in mind the financial numbers, we would want to go towards 1 lakh 20,000. So that 1 lakh 20,000 job is what we opted for and what we left behind is job number one and that job number one was giving us 100,000. So the sacrifice that we have done of job number one and that sacrifice is of 100,000. So this 100,000 sacrificed is opportunity cost. So it's simple. Whatever you do, uh, whatever sacrifice you do, that is known as opportunity cost. For a cost to be irrelevant, uh, it could be sunk cost, any cost that is a past cost, which means uh, had already been incurred. Now, what I mean to say had already been incurred, it's very simple. At the time of taking the decision, when you are taking a decision, so at that time of taking a decision, that cost had already been incurred. At the time of decision making. So that is known as sunk cost past cost and it is not relevant. <clears throat> so past cost is already incurred. Now 
comes another cost that is known as committed cost committed cost is a cost that will arise in future that will arise in future and you would be thinking if this will arise in future so uh, as i mentioned initially any future cash flow is a relevant cost so you would be thinking okay this committed cost should be a relevant cost it is not it is not a relevant cost even though this will be incurred in future but the commitment but the commitment to incur this has been made in the past which means at the time of decision making at the time of decision making are you all listening me everyone hello come on say yes are you all with me a quick yes for the confirmation so at the time of decision making at the time of decision making uh, this cost <clears throat> hasn't been incurred but the commitment to incur such a cost has been done in the past like for example a very good example is guaranteed minimum wage uh, we we have guaranteed our labor that irrespective of whatever uh, work we have in the future we will pay you a certain amount we haven't paid that certain amount yet but the commitment to pay that certain amount has been done in past even though we'll pay that in future but the commitment has been done in past so that guaranteed minimum wage is a best example of committed fixed cost same goes for your rental rental agreements you have already done the agreements so at the time of decision making agreements to pay rent had already been done even though you'll pay the rent in the future but those rental cost is a committed cost so irrelevant so it's a very simple difference in some cost it the cost has been incurred in the past whereas committed costs will be incurred in the future but the commitment to incur has been made in the past notional cost imaginary cost uh, any kind of absorption any kind of uh, cost like depreciation is not relevant for example any non cash item any non cash item uh, or i would say any depreciation uh, any uh, absorption you are doing you are working out the oars for fixed overheads so all those imaginary costs artificial costs that does not exist in real are notional and will not be relevant cost like i said non cash flows and depreciations one more thing is reapportionment of existing fixed cost now this existing fixed cost is basically what it's a committed cost it's a committed cost because fixed cost you is a one that you already have committed so if existing fixed cost uh, is a committed cost so if you just reapportion that cost to uh, to your decision so that would not be a relevant cost it is just because it is just because that you uh, uh classify this as a committed cost so any reapportionment of existing fixed cost is a committed cost and is not a relevant cost so two things that make a cash flow relevant and four things that make a cash flow irrelevant and here i am making a rule of six now this is the key thing rule of six come on say what what is this just write it down this is what rule of six quickly write rule of six so rule of six is what rule of six means these are the six things that you need to keep in mind for relevant costing decision making rule of six will make your life easier if you are confused whether a cost is relevant or not just just see whether it's incremental opportunity if you want to see whether a cost is irrelevant so just quickly see is that a past cost is that a committed cost at the time of taking the decision is that an imaginary artificial cost or is that just a reapportionment of existing fixed cost so the rule of 6 will give you the clear idea whether a cost is relevant or irrelevant now we use relevant costing for certain types of decisions and the decisions are very famous one one is the one of contract now this decision uh, 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 is a one that we use uh, taking relevant costing principles where we see uh, whether we have to go for one off contract or not now what is one off contract for example any one off opportunity that the business needs to avail in the short term uh, by availing that in the short term business can get any long term benefit so one off contract 
uh, decision making is done using relevant costing principles then make or buy decisions are also conducted using relevant costing principles that is in short term if we need to decide whether we should produce a product in house or buy that product from outside so the decision of make in house or buy from outside again requires relevant costing principles to be followed then we have shut down decisions like whether we should uh, close a certain a uh, business segment a loss making business segment uh, a loss making product a loss making department uh, <clears throat> so we have to consider that whether we should close a particular thing of department or a product that is showing a loss in the short run should we close it or not so for such shutdown decisions we do use relevant costing principles okay notional uh, is imaginary cost like non cash flows like depreciation these are artificial costs and they are one that do not have any real existence so these are not relevant cost <laughs> okay for the processing decisions are a one uh, that uh, that that the business business that takes when they need to decide whether uh, they have to uh, process a, a product further uh, and uh, would that further processing be good or not for example for example if a company is making a petrol and that petrol is a regular petrol okay regular petrol so company needs to decide whether company should sell this petrol as a like regular petrol or company should further process it further processes and make this high octane if company wants to make this high octane by further processing so the decision would be whether to sell the product as a regular petrol as a regular petrol or or uh, we should uh, further process this and make this high octane and sell this after high oct making this high octane so the decision making is whether we should sell at uh, so, uh, the, whether we should sell this as a regular petrol or we should sell as a high octane petrol by further processing it so in that again we use relevant costing principles so relevant costing uh, principles rule of 6 is used uh, for these different situations one of contract i did mention that uh, any one of opportunity uh, that is some work that is not a regular work for the business and if business is getting an opportunity for one of uh, business uh, so uh, using relevant cost principles we take a decision whether we should go for this one off contract or not because this is not our regular work uh, and for example for example we need to win any government tender so we know that uh, in short run uh, if we use relevant costing principles and we uh, just offer a price which is a low price and just win this tender so once we win win the tender we will get long run business from the government so it's a short term decision making uh, and one of contract is one of uh, one of opportunity that the business gets uh, that business uh, wants to avail in order to get benefit in the long run so for that short term one of contract company can use relevant costing principles so these are different situations uh, in which we use relevant costing principles and uh, the rule of six i i would say the rule of six is the king here if anyone remembers the rule of six they can handle relevant costing whatever decision making comes in the paper whether it's a one-off contract it's a shutdown decision it's a make or buy decision it's a further processing decision or even if it is something else even if it is something else okay so you can take decision very easily so let's now use this rule of six and let's move towards uh, our first examination question a very latest examination question a very good examination question uh, that i just want to start from so let's start uh, with a very very good question uh, that has been uh, tested in our recent examination as well
Okay, so here we are with this question. Uh, this is a latest exam paper of March, June 2019 attempt. So yes, this will give us a very good idea how to handle questions uh, that relates to relevant costing and these are the ones that have been recently tested. So a very good question, I would say, uh, if someone is good in terms of calculation, so they can handle questions like these. If they are very clear about the relevant costing principles, so it will be really easy for them to handle such questions. Let's see how we will be approaching this question. That's so strange after page number seven. It's page number nine With no page number eight Okay So let's open again Directly now this is wasting a lot of precious time now let's start with this question I hope uh, it's visible to all of you. Let me just make it more easy for you to understand. Now, Belton Park Resort is a new theme park. Uh, located in the country of Beeland, the resort is made up of a theme park, a hot hotel, and an indoor water park. Now, just, just keep this in your mind. I will not solve this entire question today. Uh, rather, I will give you this question as well to solve. So make sure one thing I'll be solving here and one part I'll give you today to solve. So do understand the technique. So it's a theme. It's, it's a resort where you have a theme park, a hotel and an indoor water park. The resort opened two months ago and is already very popular. All theme parks are required by law to shut down in colder month of Jan because of the risk of accidents. Belton Park Resort must decide whether to shut down. So this is a shutdown decision. The whole resort or just the theme park. It could choose to open. It could choose to keep and keep open on the hotel or the water park. 
So since the Belton Park Resort has not been open for long, there is limited historical data available about cost and revenues. However, based on the last two months, the following average monthly data is available where we can see the data for hotels and water park. So number of rooms, average room rate per night, average occupancy rate per month, average night spent on extras per room, contribution margin for extra 60%. Please just really just focus on the data, okay? Otherwise you will lose when I'm doing the calculation. Water park information is also given to you. Extra includes anything purchased by the customer not included in the room rate or admission price. Okay, now uh, let me just quickly go towards the requirement. Calculate the incremental cash flow uh, for the month of January 31 days. You have to assume uh, if the park decides to keep open the hotel and the water park for 15 marks in each case state whether it should remain open or should close so you have to just take a decision and tell whether uh, it's good to open or it's good to close using incremental cash flow so you have to see uh, as it says if the company decides to keep open so your mindset here will be to keep open okay as the question states that uh, keep the mindset of keeping it open Okay, if we keep the mindset of keeping it open, this is critical. So your mindset should be that if we keep this open, what will be the incremental? What will be the additional cash flow in terms of income, in terms of cost? Okay, so make sure by looking at the question, it says if we decide to keep it open. So our mindset while doing the calculation would be that we if if I am saying if we keep it open, then what happens if we get to open? OK. So we have to do calculations for hotels and water park. Now hotel calculation will be done by me right now and water park calculation will be done by you people in your homework. OK, so I will just read hotel information in front of you right now and we'll skip the water park information that you have to solve later on and then tell me what the answer is. Are you ready for this guys? Yes or no? Now management estimates that for January the average room rate per night would need to be would need to decrease by 30 percent. So this is this is important to remember that by 30 percent uh, the, the price will go down and the admission price for the water park by 20 percent. With such reductions, it is estimated that occupancy rate of 50% would be achieved for the hotel and that the number of visitors to the water park would be 52% lower than the current levels because of the January because of the low demand the occupancy will come to 50% for hotels the the average nightly spend on extra per room of 20 at the hotel and 12 per customer at water park is expected to remain unchanged so we are provided with the information for the last two months. My focus here will be towards hotel as water park is your job. Staff cost, maintenance, power cost, security and water cost and the notes are given. So what I'll do, I'll read this and according to that we'll do the workings. So let's start my calculations. I need to work out the I need to work out the incremental cash flows. Okay. Incremental cash flows. And the mindset that I need to keep is, for example, if the company decides to open it. So in the month of Jan, if this if is important, okay, if the company decides to open. This is not a decision. This is just the mindset. This is just what I'm thinking. If we open, then let's see what will be the revenue. What will be the cost? I repeat, if we open, if we open, what will be the revenue and the cost? This is what I'm doing right now. Okay. And my working will be for hotels. 
so let's work out the incremental revenue if we open in the month of january and you know why i'm emphasizing on the word if is because is because the question requirement made it clear that if the company decides to keep open then what will be the incremental cost and revenue okay so that's why i am taking the same mindset now for revenue it's easy to work out be with me uh the price will fell 30 percent from the current price of 100 so current is 100 and 30 percent reduction will be done so let's let's make a working area here where i will be performing the workings current price is 100 okay 30 percent reduction means uh let me work out the 70 percent of this because i need to reduce so the price for jan jan price will be 70 dollars so 70 will be the price for the month of jan clear i hope this is clear to all of you secondly it says that occupancy will fell to 50 percent for hotels right so let's see how many rooms are available so we have 120 rooms and 31 days we have to keep in our mind <clears throat> 31 days as given the question and 90 percent is the current occupancy current occupancy which means other than jan so rooms are 120 days are 31 so we'll multiply this 120 with 31 and we will get the answer of 3720 so how much will be the occupancy so the occupancy will be 50 percent in the month of jan which means 18 six zero rooms will be available will be used one eight six zero rooms will be used so i hope this is clear to all of you up till now the calculation that i have done in front of you it's simple and i hope there will be no problem in such a calculation so it's one eight six zero so the rooms available one eight six zero the price is 70 so let's work out the revenue that is the hotel incremental revenue is 70 multiplied by 1860 will give you a revenue of 130 200 so this is the normal revenue of the hotel 130 200 now uh, 20 dollars we earn for extras per room for extras per room based on each night so it's very simple 60 percent is the contribution from that figure 60 percent is the contribution margin so it's easy to work out the extras income that is the total rooms that are that will be occupied is 1860 into 20 is what we earn into 60 percent is the contribution okay so it's 1860 nights into 20 extras per night into 60 percent is the contribution which is double to three two zero double to three two zero so the total incremental inflow of opening in january will be 152520 152520 okay so this is 1860 20 is the extra 
revenue per day per night and 60% is the contribution. So this is the incremental extra income. This is the incremental hotel income and this is the total inflows. Why we take 60%? So it's very simple friend. 60% is the contribution. Tayyab, contribution. Obviously, we need to take contribution because variable cost will be deducted from the revenue. So we'll be left with contribution. That's why I'm taking contribution. That's it. <clears throat> okay. So I hope this is clear. Now, after working out the incremental revenue, let's move towards the cost. So I've used my entire data of 30% decrease in price and 50% the occupancy level. Uh, for my calculation purpose 31 days now staff costs now what you and what you need to think if we open in the jan so what will be the incremental cost for jan a cost that will arise just because of opening in the january is what you need to find out and the cost which will be considered as a committed cost that will continue to arise a cost that will continue to arise which means that is not incremental that is a committed cost which means if you open in january that cost will be incurred if you do not if you don't open in january that cost will still be incurred so that is a committed cost so we have to find that okay what is a committed cost and what is incremental that is specific to jan we are using rule of six here okay so it says that staff cost for hotel is 120 okay permanent staff included in the staff cost for the hotel is the salary of 30000 this is per annum per annum and we are doing one month calculation so this is per annum okay and for the hotel manager and 24000 per annum for the head chef this is also per annum these are both permanent members of staff who are paid for the full year regardless of their working hours regardless of their working hours which means whether you open in january <coughs> whether you open in january or you do not open in january these costs will continue to be incurred okay these costs will continue to be incurred so this is irrelevant cost and this means uh, this is a fixed cost or I should say this is a committed cost and this is the example of a committed cost So we should not consider this cost, but how we need to work out is very simple Okay, now what I'm what I am required to do here <clears throat> Let me just separate this area from the main presentation area so that working area is separated Okay, now see uh staff cost so the amount is 1 lakh 20 thousand right from this i will deduct the committed cost and that relates to what you say uh this manager okay and uh, what you say the chef so let's deduct <coughs> The annual cost of them is 20, 30 and 24,000. So it's simple 30,000 divided by 12, 24,000 divided by 12. Okay, so this is 2,500 and this is 2,000. So once I deduct, so I will get 115500 because this is not an incremental cost for January. This is not an incremental cost for January. This is a committed cost and being a committed cost. This is not relevant. This is a committed cost. Okay, so it's not relevant. I hope this is clear. Now going back to the question what it says. The second para relates to water park that I'm not reading. Okay, uh, that is your work to do. Then after permanent, we have temporary. The remaining staff cost. The remaining staff cost. So how much is the remaining staff cost? Is this amount? 
this is the remaining staff cost so the remaining staff cost relates to temporary staff who are only paid for the hours they work because it's an annual cost my friend and i'm doing calculation for month january is one month so i need to divide this with 12 okay i think you missed out this figure it's it's 30000 per annum and that that is why i made this per month and then deducted from the per month figure that is given above okay so this is this is actually each it says each last two months cost okay so this is the per month cost we have and that's why i deducted the per month cost now the remaining uh, relates to temporary staff who are only paid for the hours they work if the hotel st stays open in january half of these staff members will continue to work their current hours so half of the staff will continue to work because their jobs are largely unaffected by the guest occupancy rate so what do you think if you continue to open in january you need to call these temporary staff so the answer is yes but 50 percent 50 percent 50 percent uh 50 percent of the staff uh should be you know what what i should say 50 of the staff will continue to be fully occupied and this means this cost is a relevant cost then this cost relates to the normal temporary staff working so if you see if the hotel stays open half of these staff members will continue to work if they continue to work the cost will arise so this is an incremental cost so what i'm doing here is let me just divide these into two areas 50 percent will continue so the 50 percent figure is 57750 and this is what this is an incremental cost because this relates to temporary staff this is not a permanent staff okay temporary staff means incremental they work if you are open so in january if you're open they will work so this is an incremental cost the remaining 50 percent is five seven five zero five seven seven five zero now what about this 50 percent so let's read in the question it says however the other half of the staff will look proportionately less will work proportionately less hours to reflect the 50 percent occupancy rate in january as opposed to 90 percent occupancy rate of the last two months this means the remaining 50 percent of the staff hours will reduce due to lower occupancy will reduce due to lower occupancy and how much how much will they now work so currently they used to work for 90 percent occupancy so this cost is based on 90 percent occupancy right now so from this 90 percent occupancy I need to bring this to 50% occupancy from this 90% occupancy the cost is based on 90% occupancy okay so from this 90% I need to bring this to 50% occupancy so how will I do so it's very simple this cost is based on 90% occupancy right now 90% occupancy so how to bring this to 50% occupancy it's simple you need to divide this with 90 and multiply with 50 percent so this cost now will be based on 50 percent occupancy so currently obviously the question did mention that currently the company is working on 90 percent capacity okay so this cost was based on 90 percent 
and you divide this with 90 multiplied by 100 to bring this to 50 percent so the figure is 32083 so you have to consider incremental here if you open in the month of january let me quickly just give you a recap of staff costs if you open in the month of january your current cost is 120 from this you will deduct the committed fixed cost of manager of one month you will deduct the committed fixed cost of chef of one month and you will lift with this cost which relates to temporary staff now the 50 percent of the temporary staff will continue to be used in the month of january which means this cost will be incremental and you will consider it the remaining 50 percent relates to the temporary staff but that temporary staff now will not have to work for the normal hours that they used to work uh, at 90 percent occupancy and now they will work according to 50 percent occupancy so this cost is based on 90 percent occupancy so we divide this with 90 multiplied by 100 to bring this to 100 to bring this to 50 percent occupancy and this is the cost that i will be charging for the month of january which is incremental cost based on 50 percent occupancy so i will add these two together i'll add these two together and once i add these two together so what is the sum we have so the sum is eight nine eight double three okay so staff cost incremental eight nine eight double three is the incremental staff cost if we open in the month of january that i've cons i'll take here as i will add these two together so is this clear right i hope this is clear so we just have to take incremental that relates to the decision and i'm making this clear so that you should understand that what i'm doing so you need to concentrate on the numbers for sure now the second figure that we have is a one that relates to maintenance Okay, now I'm using uh, this PDF where I can write. So now we are at maintenance. So for maintenance, let's see what, what it says. <clears throat> How much is the maintenance cost given in the question? So the maintenance cost is 14,600, right? 14,600 the maintenance cost so let's read the note maintenance is undertaken by a local company tech work which bills Belton park resort for all work carried out each month okay if the hotel and the water park are close tech work will instead be paid a flat fee for the month of 4,000 for the hotel and 2000 for the water park now it's very simple this flat fee is what is a committed cost this means this will continue to be paid even if you close it it says even if you close it you will pay this flat fee so this flat fee is a committed cost whether you close in the month of january or you open in the month of january this cost will continue to be paid and this is irrelevant cost this is irrelevant cost okay so being irrelevant what i'm supposed to do very simple i just need to deduct this cost from the figure of maintenance which is 14600 so you can see this 14600 so this i will deduct this 4000 irrelevant cost that is a one that will continue to be paid so i can simply take here maintenance cost 
cost 14,600 minus 4,000 committed one and the incremental one will be 10,600. Okay, so I hope this is clear. The maintenance cost part 4,000 is irrelevant for hotel and I've just deducted is the remaining is all incremental. Then we have power cost 20,000. So what's about power cost written here? Power in power you have electricity and you have gas <clears throat> two things. So let's read for electricity. Belton Park Resort pays a fixed monthly charge for electricity of 8,000 for the hotel and 7,000 for water park all year round. Okay, so this is a monthly charge. Okay, so they pay a monthly charge of 8,000 and this is fixed, which means it's a committed cost. Whether you continue in the month of January or you discontinue it, you need to pay this cost. You need to pay this cost. So this is a committed cost of 8,000. So this means from this cost of power 20,000 I need to deduct the electricity fixed charge electricity fixed charge I need to deduct so uh, uh, as I as I just just show you the figure of 20,000 from this I need to deduct this 8,000 fixed charge and once I deduct this 8,000 fixed charge so I'm left with what once I'm done with the electricity the cost that I'm left with is the remaining gas cost Okay, so from this power cost 8,000 I have deducted. This is a committed cost, so I'm left with 12,000. Because power includes electricity and gas. So for gas, the gas charges relate to heating and include a fixed charge of 2,200 per month for hotel and 1,500 for water park. Now this again is a fixed charge and it's a committed cost. So from the total 20,000 power cost 8,000 has been deducted as a fixed as a fixed electricity cost. And now I'm deducting from this remaining 12,000 this 2200 as well. And this is also also the fixed gas cost. So I'm left with 9800. Okay. It says the remainder. This is 9,800 of the gas charge is based solely on usage. So this is based on usage. Incremental variable. Would be expected. To increase by 50% in January because of cold weather. So this remainder is a one that is uh, de that depends on the usage and this needs to be increased because of the cold weather in January because we, you will be using more gas. So I need to increase this with 50% will multiply this with 1.5 to incorporate the 50% impact and that 1.5 make becomes 14,700. So it's simple power cost was 20,000. Fixed electricity deducted 8,000. Fixed gas deducted 2,200. We are left with 9,800. The remainder. This relates to the usage and needs to be increased by 50% for January. So I've increased this with 50%, and this is 14,700 that relates to uh, the usage, and this is incremental cost. This is incremental cost. So in my answer for power, I will be writing 14,700 as my incremental cost. That is 9,800 into 1.5 is incremental cost. Okay, so this is incremental cost. Now the next thing we have is security cost 13,600. 
so let's see what it says for security if the hotel and water park are closed no changes will be made to the current arrangement for security while premises are empty this means this will continue to arise this will continue this will remain same no change will be made which is making quite clear that nothing will be done as regard this cost and this will continue to arise which is making very very much clear that this is what this is committed cost security cost is a committed cost whether you open in january or you close it uh, you have to bear this uh, security cost at 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 any cost so nothing needs to be done for this and this will continue is this clear everyone so this is a committed cost and nothing will be charged as far as the security is concerned so for security uh, i would write there is no incremental cost because this will continue to arise whether you close it or not then water so water 12900 let's see what it says it is estimated that water cost for hotel would fall to now this says fall to 6450 for the month if it remains open in january and second is for water so the second is for water park so i'm not reading for water park so this cost will fall to 6450 so right now what the cost is it's 12900 so from 12900 it will fall to 6450 now what do you think from 12900 it will fall to 6450 so what will be the cost if we continue in the january so the cost will be 6450 if we continue so it will be 6450 automatically they have given us the figure so this is incremental 6450 and this is the water cost that's it from the incremental from the incremental revenue we will just deduct these incremental cost and we'll see whether we are getting net benefit or cost for opening so after water nothing is left right so after water nothing is left everything is done now let's see what is the incremental cash flow so can you tell me what is the incremental cash flow it's a positive answer or a negative answer so it's positive answer of seven two five six two seven two five six two this is a positive answer of incremental cost and yes this means you need to take a decision now let me tell you here the marking scheme 15 marks were required for this part of the answer from this 15 marks 8.5 marks are for hotel working 6.5 marks are for water park are for water park and in this 8.5 0.5 marks are for conclusion which means your decision and eight marks are for working eight marks are for working okay so eight marks are for working so what will be your decision what will be your conclusion so conclusion will be should we continue yes we should stay open in jan as incremental benefit will be seven two five six two incremental benefit will be seven two five six two so for this you are getting 0.5 marks and for all this you are getting eight marks okay so i hope this is clear to all of you the calculation uh, i have considered the incremental costs compared with incremental revenue 
and these are the workings that I've done. Uh, so I hope is this is clear. It's very simple. What I personally believe is if you know the rule of six, any question of relevant costing you can solve by rule of six. Any any working you can do by using rule of six with no confusion at all. Sorry, I just wrote the wrong figure. Yeah. The net benefit. Yeah, the net benefit uh, is 30. 937. Yeah, yeah, you're right. 3937. This is the net figure, net benefit. So this is the benefit. So the decision remains unchanged. And let me change here as well. It's 3937. So what you say, friends, is this is this easy? Incremental revenue means additional revenue that you will earn if you continue in the month of Jan. Incremental revenue. Okay, so quickly, if you have any questions, quickly ask. Let me just make this more visible for you people on one screen. You can even take a screenshot here. You can even take the screenshot if you want to. Just take a screenshot and share in the group as well so that everybody gets to know the working. Just take a screenshot. Okay. Question is why should divide with 12 months? <laughs> My friend, this is an annual cost. Ahmed, if 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 a cost is an annual cost, why you don't think I should not divide this with 12? Can you see this? This is per annum. So I should divide this, right? Okay. Now this is clear. So through with the screenshot as well. And what's your feedback? Electricity cost was just a, a fixed cost was just a fixed cost if you just look here electricity cost was just a fixed cost of 8000 and it was not relevant don't uh, i'm sure you are thinking that you are in pakistan and you pay bill according to the uh, consumption so right now in the question it's just 8000 fix and i hope if this happens in our country so we'll be very much happy that we are paying just 8000 per annum whatever we use <laughs> so but this is not the case okay yeah is this clear everyone Okay, so I hope you like the technique and you can later on watch the video for further clarification in the calculation as well. <sighs> yeah, this Francisco, this 5570, uh, this 5570 uh, is for the staff that continues to be fully used in January and the remaining 5570 will not be fully used. So what we need to do for this 5570 is that we need to divide this with 90 because this is 90% occupancy cost and we have to bring this to 50% occupancy cost. So that's why we'll divide this with 90 and multiply this with 100. Okay. Now I cannot answer why 31 days. Okay. I cannot answer that. Why 31 days? There are certain things that you should ask the examiner yourself. Maybe uh, examiner likes to add one more day. Maybe. Okay, so I hope this is clear and now we are moving towards the next area. So this rule of six, this rule of six is a one that will help you a lot. I hope the answer is clear to all of you. So what's your feedback? Did this make made things easier for you or not? Did this make things easier for you or not? What's your feedback guys? Tell me rule of six is rule of six good. Okay, now the next area is CVP analysis. Cost volume profit analysis. 
cost volume profit analysis okay now you need to solve the remaining uh, part then we'll solve part b hamza okay you need to solve the remaining part for water parks so you have to solve for water parks from homework will you solve in the same way from homework yes guys tell me so this is the homework okay now cvp analysis the major calculations in cvp are weighted average for multiple products normally in an exam it's multiple product situation which means company is producing more than one products so four calculations are important that you should know cs ratio contribution to sales ratio break even point i'm sure people know about break even point no profit no loss margin of safety uh, the point where uh, the the area that is that is a safety area for the business maybe the profit area for the business after break even and the calculation of target profit that how many units company needs to achieve you know to achieve a desired target profit okay so these are the four important calculations of cvp analysis but in a multi product situation where company is uh, making and selling more than one products so all these four calculations are performed using weighted average workings all these four calculations are performed using weighted average workings so for that what we do we work out weighted average contribution per unit cpu means contribution per unit and we work out weighted average selling price per unit so how we work out weighted average contribution per unit is total contribution for all products divided by total number of units and how we work out average selling price is total sales revenue for all products divided by total number of units so through this we get weighted average contribution per unit and weighted average selling price per unit okay so when more than one products are being sold so you have to perform this weighted average working of contribution and selling price and based on these you perform all these four workings of cs ratio so this is called as weighted average cs ratio weighted average break even we apply these their normal formulas and we will use weighted average figures weighted average margin of safety so all these will set as weighted average okay so the key thing for these four calculations the key thing is what the key thing is weighted average work now the graphs three graphs are important multi product break even chart profit volume chart and contribution chart a break even chart is a one in which you see sales revenue line fixed cost line and a total cost line is a break even chart okay so let's now move towards another question and see how i can use the information in that question very 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 superb question very good question and i'm using all the latest questions so that we are covering all the latest things that are given in the paper and i don't know what is happening here again it's the same problem let me just minimize this okay now i got it what is happening here it's split it into two pages that's why i can't see the question entire question if i make this single page this is nice as well okay so is this visible to all of you okay 
Okay, now, so this is a question that has been recently tested again in the paper and that relates to CVP analysis. Okay, the Alka Hotel is situated in a major city close to many theaters and restaurants. Be with me, please. The Alka Hotel has 25 double bedrooms. 25 double bedrooms. And it charges guests 180 per room per night. Okay, regardless of single or double occupancy. The hotel's variable cost is 60 per occupied room per night. The Alka Hotel is open for 365 days a year and has a 70% budgeted occupancy rate. Okay. This is the budgeted occupancy rate. Fixed costs are budgeted at 600,000 a year and accrue evenly throughout the year. That's fine. During the first quarter, quarter one of the year, the room occupancy rates are significantly below the level expected at other times of the year with Alka Hotel expecting to sell 900 occupied rooms night during quarter one. So that's pretty much low in quarter one. Options to improve profitability are being considered including closing the hotel for the duration of quarter one or adopting one of the two possible projects as follows. So one option they have let's close the hotel because CVP analysis is a decision making technique and it helps in taking right decisions. Other option they have is to uh, go for one of the possible options given below. Project one. Let's see what theta package is. For quarter one only. The Alka hotel management would offer guests a theta package. Couples who pay for two consecutive nights which means they need to buy the room for two consecutive nights at a special rate of 67.5 per room night will also receive a pair of theater tickets for a payment of just dollar hundred. The theater tickets are very good value and are the result of long negotiation between Elka Hotel Management and the theater. The theater cost, the theater ticket cost the Elka 95 per pair. Okay. The Elka's hotel fixed cost specific to this project, to this project, this is specific fixed cost, are budgeted to be 20,000. That this is the fixed cost that relates to this theater project only. Okay. The hotel management believes that the theater package will have no effect on their usual quarter one customers this means these 900 these will continue to come okay these will continue to come who are on business travelers and who have no interest in theater tickets but still require the usual room project two this is a break-even chart i just told you see a break-even chart shows you sales revenue line fixed cost line total cost line okay so you can see here sales revenue line total cost line fixed cost line wow awesome there is a scope to extend the elka and create enough space to operate as restaurant for the benefit of its guest okay so this is a this is what they want to open up restaurant there. The annual cost and revenue and volumes for for combined restaurant and hotel. Now this is a combined graph combined, which means the current hotel plus the restaurant are illustrated in the following graph. The graph does not include the effect of theater package, which is option one. Now let's 
move towards the question and see what has been asked using the current annual budgeted figures so we have to use the budgeted figure annual budgeted figure ignoring the two proposed projects just ignore the projects calculate break even number of occupied room nights which is break even per unit break even per unit is what i need to work out per room break even per room means per unit and the margin of safety as a percentage i need to show for four marks margin really as a percentage okay so if i go towards the upper information and i have to ignore these two projects so will be able to work out from this information that is available okay i will be able to work out elka hotel break even in units rooms rooms means units that we need to work out so what is the formula it's fixed cost divided by contribution per unit okay so let's move towards the workings fixed cost is 600000 for the year 600000 divided by contribution per unit so 180 is the selling price and 60 is the variable cost so 180 minus 60 will give you 120 as your contribution per unit so easy questions have been tested lately i don't know why people cannot pass it's the examination pressure that is killing them that you need to handle so 180 minus 60 and here you have the answer of break even in terms of rooms how many rooms you need to sell for break even and 5000 rooms this means for break even it's important to sell 5000 rooms it's important to sell 5000 rooms if you need to break even okay then what i need is margin of safety as a percentage so how will i work out it's very simple formula is sales units minus break even units divided by sales units because it requires as a percentage so let's do the working how much is the break even units that i know is 5000 how much is sales units that i need to work out so if i go back to the question let's work out 25 double rooms we have into 365 days the hotel is open okay so 25 into 365 is 9125 rooms are available in the hotel throughout the year throughout the year 9125 rooms are available throughout the year it says that we work at 70% capacity so 9125 multiplied by 70% makes 6387.5 6387.5 which means the total number of rooms that are that we are able to sell in a year are 6387.5 25 rooms we have double rooms 365 total rooms available are 9125 from this 9125 we sell 70% which means we sell 6387.5 rooms so our sales units is 
6387.5 okay divided by 6387.5 gives you a percentage of 21.72 percent this is margin of safety are you all getting my point margin of safety indicates the profit area it indicates it indicates the units it indicates the units after break even because at break even it's no profit no loss at break even it's no profit no loss okay so it indicates units after break even means units that are profitable units that are what profitable units so margin of safety is clear 21.72 percent is the margin of safety which means your profitable units are 21.72 percent of the sales so the more the margin of safety come on guys are you with me the more the margin of safety it is good or bad for the company what do you think good or bad for the company yeah it's good for the company more the margin of safety nice so we are done with this four marks i hope this is clear now the next part says ignoring the two proposed projects calculate the budgeted profit or loss for quarter 1 so again we have to ignore the two projects four marks are given here and explain whether hotel should close for the duration of quarter 1 or not now again you have to explain whether the hotel should close for quarter 1 or not so it's very much like relevant costing decision making shutdown area that we did cover right now don't you think because if we want to close the hotel for quarter 1 so this is a short term decision that we are taking and we need to decide whether we should close this for quarter 1 only so this means we are thinking about short term closure and when you think about short term closure you need to use the relevant costing principles wow what a connection between cvp and relevant costing examiner made okay so first of all let's discuss the breakup explanation is for 2.5 marks and calculation for 1.5 marks wow and our students normally think what calculation gets more marks and theory gets less marks here theory is getting more marks because because you have to use the relevant costing principle of shutdown decision here for 2.5 marks the examiner report includes this comment that student were not able to pick this 2.5 marks they were not able to pick that this was relevant costing shutdown decision this is the examiner feedback and students were good in calculation and that only scored 1.5 marks unfortunately so friends let's perform the calculation part 2 budgeted profit and loss so what i need for this calculation uh maybe i require contribution per unit that i know the selling price is 180 i guess yeah and the variable cost is 60 so it's 180 minus 60 and uh, this is 120 multiplied by how many rooms do we expect in quarter 1 friends how many rooms do we expect in quarter 1 so we expect to sell 900 rooms in quarter 1 900 rooms in quarter 1 multiplied by 900 will give you total contribution of 10800 10800 
Hamza, I've used a lot of spreadsheet the last two days uh, because in spreadsheet, it's important to understand complex calculations. So these are not complex calculations from a spreadsheet perspective. So I think uh, if I use spreadsheet for these calculations, so student will again again ask me just show the working, just show the workings. So that's why I'm using here on one note because here it's more about the calculation understanding rather than how to solve one spreadsheet. So this is the contribution that you will earn less the fixed cost. So what do you think? Should I charge the annual fixed cost or the quarterly fixed cost? This is the annual fixed cost per year. So I should charge what? Quarterly fixed cost? Yeah, quarterly fixed cost. So 600,000 divided by 12 multiplied by 3 quarter, right? So I need quarterly fixed cost and that quarterly fixed cost is 1,50,000. So this is the fixed cost that I will incur and the budgeted Profit, sorry, budgeted loss is how much? It's 42,000. Budgeted loss. 42,000. So it's very simple, right? Budgeted 42,000. Quarterly fixed cost is what we are required to use. I hope this is clear. Now you are getting 1.5 marks here. That's it. 2.5 marks for what? For applying relevant costing principles. See, this is something we are not aware of. Wow, Majid. This is what I'm explaining right now. I never said my friend that this budgeted profit and loss is based on relevant costing. Now what I'll discuss is based on relevant costing. Now what I'll discuss. So should we close for quarter one? The question is should we close for quarter one? So the answer is no. We should continue. Why? Why we should continue? Because this is 108 incremental contribution. This is incremental contribution. And this 150,000 is a committed cost. It's a committed fixed cost will be incurred irrespective. Wow. This 150,000 is a committed fixed cost. If you close the hotel for quarter one, then too you will incur this 150,000. If you will not close, you will not, you will still incur. So rule of six, this is incremental income. Are you getting my point, my friends? This is incremental income contribution and this is committed cost. So this means this is relevant. Wow, what a connection between CVP and relevant. Did you like the connection, guys? This is relevant cost and this is irrelevant cost. Okay, so considering this loss, we should not close. Are you getting what I've done here? Did you understand the link that I created here? That's good if you're loving it. So my friends, this is the connection. By looking at this loss, the decision will not be to close. Because if you close for quarter one, it's not a permanent closure. It's not a permanent shutdown. It's a temporary shutdown for quarter one. So if you close for quarter one, you will lose. You will lose this incremental contribution of 108, but you will continue. Continue to commit this 150 fixed costs and you will be in a further loss. 
you will be in a further loss. So keeping in mind the relevant costing principles, we should not close this. And this was all you had to write in a paragraph for 2.5 marks, which your examiner said in its report that people missed out. People missed out. So I hope you are understanding my point here, friends. Is this clear to all of you? Give your feedbacks. Where are you guys? It's a unique link that I've created in front of you. I give break at 9.30 sharp. Okay. So I hope this is clear. So you can see here that in my calculation, I have worked out the budgeted profit and loss. And based on this loss, what one would say, close it. But we will say no, we will not close it because this is a committed fixed cost that will be incurred irrespective of you close it or not. And this is your incredible contribution that you will lose. So as we have just completed relevant costing, so still you saw relevant costing principles have been used here. So Rubab, is this clear? I hope you are not confused anymore. Everybody, is this clear? So the comment had a weightage of 2.5 marks. Friends, everything okay? Understood? Great. Now, the next part. What's the next part? Let's prepare for the next part before the break. And you just think what you need to do, okay? Calculate break even point in sales value. In sales value, okay? We need to work out break even in revenue. And explain whether hotel should adopt the project or not. So this is just for project one only. So we need to work out break even for project one, the theater package. We need to work out for theater package. Are you getting my point for theater package? Again, 2.5 marks for explanation and 1.5 marks for the break even answer. So let's work out break even for theater package. So we just need to work out for theater here. We just need to work out the break even for theater package. Okay. Now, you think how will you work out the breaking of theater package? I'm giving you a five minute break here, and you think how will you work out the breaking of a theater package? This is the theater package information. Okay. So please just think how will you work out the break even for theater package? And your break starts now, and that is of five minutes.
So, uh, let's start with the working. So I asked you to work out the break even, right? For the theta project. Now let's perform the calculations. Break even in revenue for theater project. Okay. So first of all, we need fixed cost. So how much is the fixed cost? So as I am only calculating for the theater project, so I will use theater specific fixed cost. So I will use theater specific fixed cost only. And that is 20,000. Okay. Theater specific fixed cost is what I will use. And I need to divide this with CS ratio. So I need CS ratio of theater specific. So for that, what working I need to perform. So it's very simple. It's very simple. Sixty seven point five per night cost per night rate and you need to go for two consecutive. So. First of all uh, revenue. Sixty seven point five multiplied by two is one thirty five the hotel revenue of two nights. Hotel revenue of two nights. Okay. Second. We need to work out the. Revenue that they will receive. From the tickets that is hundred hundred. So. Ticket revenue. Ticket revenue. Of hundred. So this makes 235 per theater. Okay. So this is per theater. It's uh, 235. Now the cost variable cost. So what is the room cost? So the question says room cost is 60. You can see 60 here. Multiplied by 2 is 120. And the ticket cost. Ticket cost is how much? Ticket cost is 95. 95 up here. So it's 95 ticket cost. So the room cost is variable ticket cost is variable and what is the contribution per unit for theta? It's 20. Contribution per unit is 20. So it's 20 per unit for theta. I hope this is clear to all of you. <laughs> okay. 20 per unit for theta. Now. After this. 20. What are we supposed to do? We need CS ratio. So contribution of 20 divided by selling price of 235 will give you 8.51% as CS ratio. Contribution to sales ratio. Contribution to sales ratio of 8.51. So this is all theater specific guys. Is this clear? Theater specific working that we need to do. This 20 is cost per unit. Cost per unit. Sorry, 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 not cost contribution per unit. Of 20. So the ticket cost is 95. 
room variable cost is 120 room revenue of two nights is 135 ticket revenue is 100 because it's a deal in theater it's a deal you can see couple who pay for two consecutive nights so how can i work out per night then if it is two consecutive night for theater package they will be given one ticket they will be given one ticket when they pay for two consecutive nights okay so contribution per ticket is worked out now I'll divide this with CS ratio of 8.51% and I will get break even answer of $235,000. This is break even in revenue, $235,000. Okay. So, Parvez, I, I, I think this is clear. Calculation of two nights is just because that one ticket, if you need, you need to pay for two consecutive nights. That's why two for theater package. So it's break even of 235,000. And uh, this is what I need to work for for two nights. So this is the contribution and break even answer for theater project. Clear everyone. Are you all with me? Now the explanation part that will give you 2.5 marks as 1.5 marks are for this one and 2.5 marks will get uh, for the second one. This 60 is given in the question, my friend. You need to concentrate in the question. It's variable cost of 60 per, per room and 120. Is 16 to 2 because two nights cost is 120. So 16 to 2 is 120. Okay, yes. So this is 16 to 2 is 120, right? Because two night cost. Now, explanation for 2.5 marks. So this is the break even revenue, right? This is break even revenue break even revenue now we need to explain whether it's viable or not this is very important to understand this explanation is really important to understand and what is important here so try to understand what is important here So, this only relates to quarter one, right? This is a quarter one deal. So, in quarter one, let's see. In quarter one, the usual customers will be 900. Okay? 900. The usual customers will be 900. And let's see quarter one capacity. What quarter one capacity? So the total capacity that we have worked out was nine one two five rooms. See, nine one two five room was the total capacity. Twenty five rooms into three sixty five is nine one two five rooms is the total capacity. So from this total capacity of nine one two five. I will divide this with four so that I get quarter one capacity and nine one two five divided by four will give me capacity of two two eight one rooms. Two two eight one rooms. Okay. So total capacity is nine one two five divided by four. So I'll get the answer of four and this is 
the capacity of each quarter and 900 are the usual customers this means these 900 are not impressed by the theater package as the question stated here in the question you can see very clearly that these 900 will continue who are business travelers and who have no interest in theater tickets no interest in theater tickets no interest in theater tickets okay so friends if they have no interest in theater tickets so these are the normal customers now how much rooms will be available for theater customers so if i deduct here 2281 minus 900 these are the usual customers so the theater customers availability will be for 1381 rooms 1381 rooms will be available for theater customers okay 1381 900 are the usual ones total capacity is 9125 divided by 4 quarterly capacity is this one from the quarterly capacity i deducted the 900 usual customers that will continue to come my friend we are working for quarter one i'm talking about the total capacity and that 70 percent related to the current 70 percent capacity we are assessing this project option of theater one please just focus okay so it's 1381 rooms available for theater customers now let's see how much is needed for break even so the break even revenue that we have worked out is dollar two thirty five thousand right break even is two thirty five thousand in terms of dollars and if i need break even in terms of rooms if i need break even in terms of rooms so what i'll be doing here is i'll use this twenty thousand fixed cost and will divide this with contribution per unit so that is 20 contribution per unit of 20 so once i divide this with contribution per unit of 20 this gives me the answer of 1000 sorry 1000 theater packages will be required for break even 1000 theater packages will be required for for this break even 1000 theater packages will be required because the entire working is for theater packages right so this is also theater packages this is break even revenue of 235000 for theater packages okay so 1000 theater packages will be required and each theater package listen very carefully and each theater package means two nights will be required two nights will be required because the question stated that for each theater package couple who have to pay two consecutive nights which means two nights will be required for each theater package so if 1000 theater packages are required for the break even into two means 2000 rooms will be required for break even this is break even this is break even of theater packages are you getting the point and each theater package requires two nights so this means 2000 rooms will be required for break even are you all getting how technical the question is the working that we have done here relates to theater packages only now how many rooms are available how many rooms are available 1381 and how many are required for break even 2000 so not viable so not viable because 2000 required 
for break even in terms of rooms and available rooms ke are available rooms are how many guys available rooms are how many 1381 One three eight one is the available rooms. So this is not a viable option. See how we have to comment. So let me quickly give you a recap of the working that I did. We wanted break-even revenue for theater project. So we took theater-specific fixed cost and theater-specific contribution to sales ratio, which I worked out how. For each theater ticket, for each theater ticket, we required two nights, and the cost of the room is sixty-seven point five, which means one thirty-five revenue for two nights for each theater ticket, and each ticket revenue is hundred, so there's two thirty-five revenue per theater ticket. Okay, then we worked out the cost. Cost of two nights is one twenty. Ticket cost is ninety five. So the contribution when you deduct two thirty from two thirty five the remaining figures. So your contribution per theater ticket of twenty. Contribution per theater ticket of twenty. Okay. So I worked out the CS ratio by contribution and selling price. and like this i worked out the revenue break even for theater for theater project this is in revenue terms but if i divide this with contribution per unit so i will get the break even in terms of units which means 1000 theater packages are required because ticket cost is not for two nights room cost is for two nights my friend room cost so 1000 theater packages are required for break even and each theater package requires two nights i don't know why you are not getting because it's very clearly written here two consecutive nights are required for one theater package for one theater package okay So, two thousand theater packages are required for break even, and one package requires two nights, which means two thousand rooms will be required for break even. Now, how many we have? So, the quarterly capacity of the room is two two eight one. From this total capacity, I deducted. Sorry, I divide this with four for each quarter. And nine thousand are nine hundred are the usual customers, so thirteen eighty one rooms are available. And break even is at two thousand. So if break even is at two thousand, and we just have thirteen eighty one available, so it's not viable to invest. It's not viable to invest. Okay, true. so this is what you have to comment in a paragraph form for 2.5 marks 2.5 marks yasir khan is this clear each theater package requires two nights okay so 2.5 marks are you all with me guys come on tell me is this clear to all of you Okay, now one more part for you to solve. One more part for you to solve. Certain things I am telling you here, and then you have to draft yourself. Okay, using the graph, quantify and comment upon financial effect of project two on the 
Elka Hotel. Eight marks. Four marks for calculation. Four marks for theory. Four marks for theory. So, if we go for that hotel, restaurant. So, let's see what happens. We are given with the numbers that at 8,000 rooms, revenue will be 2,000. At 8,000 rooms, the cost will be 1,560. At 8,000, the fixed cost will be 800. So, I'm just giving you a few hints and then you want, then I want you people to solve this. 8,000 divided by, sorry, it's the vice versa, revenue of 2 million divided by 8,000 rooms will give you what? Selling price per room, okay? Now, the fixed cost will be 800. The fixed cost will be 800. So, this is after the project. So, you can compare. You can compare this with the current fixed cost. And how much is the current fixed cost? And yes, make sure this data is for the entire year, not per quarter. So the current fixed cost is 600, 600. So how much will be the increase in fixed cost? I'm giving you the idea how you need to approach this. Is 600. So you can compare and see the fixed cost will increase by how much? 200 because of the hotel your restaurant project okay so you can work out the current selling price you can compare with the current selling you can work out this new selling price with the current selling price you can compare you can compare the new fixed cost with the current fixed cost and like this you have to comment so Using the graph, quantify and comment upon financial effect of project 2 on Alka Hotel. You solve this from homework. I've given you just a quick idea what you need to do. And the idea was very much clear that you can use these numbers to work out the selling price per unit after the restaurant, fixed cost after the restaurant and compared with the current. So what actually you have to do? Simple. Compare the current situation with after the restaurant, after the restaurant. Okay. By using the numbers, by using the graph. The examiner feedback was that people were able to solve this. Yeah, you can, you can, you need to compare. See what you can compare. You can compare break even the current break even with this break even. You can compare the current margin of safety with margin of safety. So listen, you can compare sales. You can compare total cost, the current total cost with this total cost. You can compare the current fixed cost with this fixed cost. You can compare the current break even with this break even. You can compare the current margin of safety with this margin of safety. Five things you can compare and write. That's it. Five things you can compare and write. I hope you are getting my point. So I want you to draft this answer for. Uh, how many marks is this for? So this is for eight marks. So it's a comparison that you have to do. 
yeah this will be on this will be on word processing sheet word processing sheet okay friends are you ready for the second homework come on tell me two things you need to do one for relevant costing one for cvp so compare the sales total cost fixed cost of current with the proposed one break even and margin of safety of current with proposed one and we'll discuss or i'll tell you the answer later on uh, what actually you are required to do so i hope this is clear and this question is also clear to all of you multi product contribution chart uh, is a one in which you show sales revenue line variable cost line and total cost line there is no fixed cost line here we show variable cost line instead of this this is a section c question so hey this is a section c question multi product profit volume chart shows you the profit and loss line in which we make two lines highest cs ratio line and constant mix line right now the graph i just saw was the break even graph so i hope this is clear now moving towards the next area of risk and uncertainty so very quickly risky situation is a one in which you have probabilities uncertain situation is a one in which you do not have probabilities do not have probability okay there are four decision maker risk seeker is a one who wants to take high risk high risk risk averse takes very low risk actually he tries to avoid risk and takes very low risk risk neutral goes for the most likely result most likely result and sore loser takes decision on the basis of future regrets takes decision on the basis of future regrets okay so risk averse decision maker uses expected value sorry risk neutral decision maker uses expected value risk seeker uses maxi max technique risk averse uses maxi min technique okay sold loser uses mini max technique so i hope this is clear i i have easily fixed the four decision makers with four techniques expected value is a long term average is used by risk neutral maximax seeker maximin averse minimax sole loser so this is known as decision rule okay decision rule now very important thing risky situation is a one in which we use expected values why because in risky situation we have what probabilities and ev does use what probabilities ev does use what probabilities so in risky situation we use expected value because expected value uses probabilities in uncertain situation we use decision rule in uncertain situation we use what guys decision rule because in decision rule there are no probabilities so maxi max does not use probability maxi min does not use probability minimax regret rule does not use probability okay so let's sum up in risky situation we use expected value see it's i'm making this very simple summarized for you listen in risky situation we use expected value and expected value is used by come on tell me risk neutral 
See, risk neutral. In uncertain situation, we use decision rule. Decision rule. Okay. Decision rule number one. Decision rule number one. Maxi max used by risk seeker. Decision rule number two. Maxi min used by risk averse. Decision rule number three. Minimax regret rule used by sore loser. What a summary. What a summary. So I've connected risk and uncertainty with the techniques and techniques with decision makers. The situation has been linked with technique and technique has been linked with decision makers. Come on guys, do you like this? Are you all with me? Yes or no? This is clear. So the situation has been linked with techniques and techniques have been linked with decision makers. What's your feedback? Easy or difficult? Okay, now let's move towards another question. So it's raining questions right now. Let's start with this question. Okay. So Milo runs a cafeteria situated on the ground floor of a large corporate office block. Uncertainty in uncertainty, Abid, I did mention we use decision rule. And decision rule means maximax, maximum, minimax regret rule. Because in uncertainty, you don't have probabilities. And these techniques do not use probabilities that you will see right now. So each of the five floors of the building are occupied and they are in total one, two, four, zero employees. This is an empty queue. Milo sells lunches and snacks in the cafeteria. Okay. The lunch menu is freshly prepared each morning and the company has to decide how many meals to make each day. Now this is what the company needs to decide this is decision making this is what company needs to decide this is decision making as the office block is located in city center there are several other places situated around the buildings where staff can buy lunch so the level of demand for lunches in cafeteria is uncertain okay so what you need to decide is how many meals to make but you are not sure about what we are not sure about demand. Okay. The company has analyzed daily sales over the previous six months and, and, and established four possible demand levels and their associated probabilities. He has produced the following payoff table to show daily payoffs. Now this is a payoff table. Payoff means returns. Returns of your actions. So if you invest, you earn profit. Profit is a payoff. You invest, you incur loss. Loss is a payoff. Okay. So it's return of your actions. Now, you can see payoff table. And remember, this payoff table is a two-way table which shows two things. Always in a payoff table, there are two things. One is decision alternative, and second is 
स्टेट ऑफ नेचर you are even required sometimes in the examination to prepare this pay off table so that is why i am telling you a pay off table is a one in which you have decision alternatives and you have state of nature decision alternatives and state of nature okay so do keep this in your mind this is a million dollar point something that is in the control of a decision maker something that is carefully listen what i'm saying something which is in the control of a decision maker is decision alternative that is company needs to decide how many meals to make 450 620 775 960 this is something that is in the control of decision maker so something which is in the control of decision maker is what decision alternative understand so whenever you read a question and you are not sure what is decision alternative just think in the question that is this in the control of the decision maker and if you say yes so this is decision alternative second something which is not in the control of the decision maker is state of nature and that is demand you cannot control demand cannot control demand so something which is not in the control of the decision maker is what friends decision sorry state of nature and another shortcut to find out what is state of nature in the paper another million dollar shortcut are you ready for this million dollar shortcut guys tell me another million dollar shortcut is what when when probabilities are attached so it's very much likely that probabilities are attached with with what with state of nature probabilities are attached with state of nature okay so you can see probabilities are attached with state of nature so these demand is state of nature it's not compulsory that it is on x axis or y axis it could be any ways so something that is in your control is what friends is what come on tell me is decision alternative something which is not in your control is what state of nature and which state of nature usually you will see what you are not replying my friends with state of nature you will see what you will see probabilities being attached so in short when in the paper you are required to make a pay off table just keep this in mind and find what is in the control of the decision maker that is da something which is not in the control of decision maker is state of nature and with state of nature what you will find tell me come on with state of nature what you will find you will find probabilities because you cannot control because you don't know what will happen that is why you have probabilities that is why you have probabilities because you cannot control so this is a payoff table where you can see daily payoffs payoffs i as i mentioned payoff could be what payoff could be profit loss whatever it is so these are basically the payoffs which is which is the profits actually the company will earn so is this clear about da and sun everyone now if milo adopts a maxi min approach to decision making which daily supply level will be will he choose no majid this is the trick my friend it is really important to find out because that is demand and when you want to match the demand so you keep your supply according to demand okay yeah you are right but <laughs> uh, rabia is it's it is basically uh, in general if you see risk and uncertainty is used in general terms 
they do have a specific meaning here so here it is written above it it it, it is written uncertain so that is not that means generally it is written okay so specific definitions are risk and uncertainty with and without probabilities so above it is written generally okay now maxi maxi min approach so see maxi min maximum from minimum what this means this means from minimum payoffs from minimum payoffs select select maximum are you ready my point from minimum payoffs from minimum payoffs select maximum so let's see what are the minimum payoffs so what is this an alternative either we'll make 450 supplies either we'll produce 620 or we'll produce 775 or we'll produce 960 okay so in 450 what is the minimum 1170 in 620 what is the minimum 980 in 775 what is the minimum 810 in 960 what is the minimum 740 so from the list of minimums we are selecting the maximum we are selecting the maximum and that maximum answer is 908 sorry 1170 maximum so the answer is a now the question is why a risk averse person uses this why a risk averse person uses this because risk averse is a one who is not much very happy is not very much happy to take risk he tends to go for a very low risk option and he is conservative by nature what is he he is conservative by nature conservative by nature so person who is conservative always thinks about worst options that is it he says if i produces 450 so the worst outcome would be it's same right now if i produce 620 the worst outcome would be 980 if i produce 775 so the worst outcome would be 810 if i produce uh what you call 600 and 960 so the worst outcome would be 740 so ours is a conservative person who always considers the worst outcomes and from those worst outcomes he says go for the best one so that is why from the minimum payoffs minimum payoffs we are selecting the maximum because risk averse is a person who uses negative mindset who is negative by nature and who always says okay i will go for the lowest option as he thinks negatively so from the list of negatives he will select the maximum i hope this is clear and this connection is also clear this understanding is also clear yes what you say yes or no is this okay everyone then comes minimax regret approach are you all with me not replying very fast for this we need to make a regret table for this we need to make a regret table very much similar to payoff table so how will we make a regret table 
let me just show you 450 620 775 960 Again, in demand, what options we have? 450, 620, 775, 960. I'm short of space here. I hope you will manage. Okay? Now, when you make a regret table, what we do? We work out the future regrets. How do we work out future regrets is a question. How do we work out future regrets is a big question. It's simple. It's pretty much simple. Let's assume if the demand comes out to be 450 in the future. If it's if okay. If the demand comes out to be 450 in the future, tell me which DA will provide you the highest profit. It's 1170. If the demand in future works out to be 450, so the highest option is 1170. Okay. Now, if you select this highest 1170 and this is the highest. So will you have any future regret by selecting 450 today? No. You will have no regrets for selecting 450 today because 450 is the highest and you selected the highest. There will be no regret. Okay. Secondly, secondly, what now if you select 620 and the highest is 1170, as I mentioned here, and if you select 620, so how much will you earn? 980. So how much will be your regret in that case? You will have a regret of 190 and you will say yourself. Oh, what I have done if I would have selected 1170. So I would would not have regretted today by the amount of 190 because this this 980 is less than 1170 and like this you work out the regrets for all other options the highest is 1170 and if you opted for this 810 so the regret would have been how much 360 are you all getting if highest is 1170 and if you have gone for this 740 option so your regret would have been 430 you are working out future future regrets and like this you have to do for others as well now if you assume that if the demand is for if the demand in future is 620 so in 620 what is the highest here it's 1612 and in the same way you start deducting so the highest is 1612 and you if you went for this 1170 so the regret in that case would have been how much guys are you all with me 442 second case it's zero because you've selected 1612 in third case what's the regret 217 in fourth case it's 322 are you all with me if you then if you just assume that if the demand is 775, so where is the highest? Here. So start deducting one by one 
from this highest. So the regret in first case would be 2015 minus 1170 and the regret is 1326. Second, it's 884. Third, it's 0. Fourth, it's 230. And for the last one, the highest is this amount. So the regret is 8. So I, I just just I, just a mistake, small mistake. I just wrote this wrong. Uh, for 775, it's 845. Okay, it's 845 regret. Yeah, it's 845 regret, and it's 403. It's 403. Okay. 845, 403, then it's 0, and then at the last it's 230. For the last one, it's 13, 26 regret, 8, 8, 4 regret, four eighty one and it's zero okay so i hope this is clear to all of you now these are the regrets so how will we take a decision guys how will we take a decision these are the future regrets now the rule is from maximum regrets from maximum regrets select minimum regret it's the other way around, right? From maximum regrets, select minimum regret. So let's find out the maximum regrets in the question through this regret table. So let me just write here maximum regrets. I am creating a new space here. Now the focus should be on decision alternative, okay? Decision alternative because you have to decide about DA. So in 450, the maximum regret is coming where? The maximum regret is coming where? 1326. From 620, the maximum regret is coming where? 884 in 775 the maximum regret is coming where 481 from 960 the maximum regret is coming where it's 430 so from maximum regrets for each da for each decision alternative for each decision alternative from maximum regrets we'll select the minimum regret minimum future regret and that is what 430 so this is d which decision maker uses this is sore loser who decides on the basis of future regret future regret everyone are you with me is this clear are the calculations clear to all of you? Going good or not? Decision making area. Okay. Now, which of the following statement is or are true? If company chooses to use expected value to assist in his decision making regarding the number of lunches to be provided. Milo could be considered to be taking a defensive and a conservative approach to his decision. So is this true or false? This is false. Because expected value is used by risk neutral. Right? 
brother from maximum regrets we need to select minimum okay from maximum regrets from maximum regrets so that's why i just made a list here if you just see these are maximum regrets from that i need to select the minimum one okay shanze is this clear okay so first statement is what false yes because defensive and conservative approach is used by risk averse and risk averse never uses expected value is this clear to all of you hello everyone uh francisco the final decision that we'll take will be based on will be based on my friend the decision alternative so final decision that you will take will be based on decision alternative like for either we should make 450 620 ya supply side you are right okay expected value will ignore any variability which could occur across the range of possible outcomes is this true or false this is true because expected value is an average answer it's it's an average answer and it does not considers variation it provides you a mean it provides you an average answer whenever we work out expected value what we get we get an average answer we get an average answer okay so it ignores variability expected value will not take into account the likelihood of different outcomes occurring is this true or false this is false because it does considers the likelihood of different outcomes occurring by using probabilities it's false are you all getting my point expected value can be applied by company as he is evaluating a decision which occurs many times yes expected value assumes that decision is a repetitive decision expected value is used for those projects where repetition is highest where repetition is highest expected value is used for those projects are you getting my point friends so it's true okay so the answer is b now now i'm coming towards this question as i mentioned in my presentation these three other techniques used by different decision makers and expected values used by risk neutral the other techniques include sensitivity analysis decision trees simulation decision tree is used for making multiple decisions at a same time multiple decision at the same time we use decision trees what is sensitivity sensitivity identifies the most critical variable identifies the most critical variable so let's now move towards the next part which of the following statement are true regarding sensitivity of the investment now listen whenever you need to find out sensitivity 
so the formula is very simple profit divide by the variable profit divide by the variable if you need to work out the sensitivity of certain things for example i need to work out sensitivity of <laughs> selling price selling price so what i'll do 385 is my profit and i'll divide this with selling price but for selling price what we use we use sales revenue so for selling price we use what sales revenue so if you are required to work out sensitivity of selling price you can use sales revenue which is 1300 now can you tell me what the answer is it's simple 385 divided by 1300 it's 29.6 percent now what this means it's very easy to understand sensitivity identifies the most critical variable okay it's very easy to understand just listen very carefully what i'm saying that if if the selling price decreases if the selling price decreases by 29.6 percent so if the selling price decreases by 29.6 percent just imagine if the revenue decreases by 29.6 percent so how much amount will be that so if you work out 1300 multiplied by 29.6 percent and the answer would again be 385 obviously obviously 385 so if your revenue goes down by 29.6 percent this means it reduces by 385 okay see if it reduces by 385 and all other remain constant all other remain constant this is the assumption of sensitivity that all other will remain constant so if all other remains constant and if revenue goes by down by 29.6 percent which is 385 of 1300 right which means your profit will also go down by 385 and will come to zero wow very simple formula is profit divide by the variable variable means any variable for which you need to work out sensitivity you use this formula so 29.6 percent if the revenue goes down by 29.6 percent this is 385 if it goes down by 385 and all other things remain constant the profit would go down by 385 and will come to zero so our reduction in selling price by 29.6 percent will bring the profit to zero okay <laughs> now let's work out for sales volume so what are okay let's forget about sales volume okay let's let's forget about sales volume. let's work out for fixed cost fixed cost so what will be the formula very simple profit is 385 divided by 70 come on what is the answer can anyone tell me five hundred and fifty percent are you all with me guys come on tell me the answer will be five hundred and fifty percent so if the fixed cost increases by five hundred and fifty percent because this is a cost increase in cost will bring profit to zero so if your fixed cost increases by 550 percent how much will be that 
so 70 multiplied by 550 percent is what 385 so if your fixed cost increases by 550 percent this means it increases by 385 and if 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 fixed cost increases by 385, the profit goes down by what? 385 and will be at zero. This means fixed cost increases by 385 and all other things remain constant. This is this is the assumption. This is the assumption. All other remain constant, so the profit will be zero. So 550% increase in fixed cost will bring profit to zero. 29.6% decrease in revenue will bring profit to zero. Now, if I ask you to work out for contribution, what will be your answer? Can you tell me quickly? 385 divided by 455 for contribution what is the answer guys the answer is 80 4 percent now contribution is a positive thing right a positive thing so I would say increase in contribution. Increase in contribution will bring. Increase in contribution will bring. I beg your pardon. Decrease in contribution will bring profit to zero. So for any positive figure. Any positive cash flow. Remember decrease of that will bring profit to zero. And for any negative figure. The increase of that will bring profit to zero. For any negative, it's increase. For any positive, it's decrease. So if contribution decreases by 84.6%, <coughs> this is 385. So the profit will be zero. Okay. Now, now let's work out for variable cost. Quickly for variable cost. 385 divided by what is the variable cost? Eight forty five. Eight forty five. So what is the answer? Can anyone tell me? It's how much 45.5 percent and this is a cost so for cost what i should write increase or decrease the increase in cost will bring profit to zero increase now out of all these which is the most critical one out of all these which is the most critical one that has a lowest percentage lowest percentage lowest percentage so lowest percentage is of let's let's check 45 550 29.6 84.6 which is the lowest percentage is sales and sales is the most critical variable most critical variable is sales sales is the most critical variable okay that has the minimum percentage chain can bring profit to zero the one that changes by a small percentage and brings profit to zero is the most critical one but it assumes that only one variable will change at a time 
now if you are asked for sales volume as you see here so for sales volume we use contribution for sales volume we use contribution so whenever you required for sales volume we use contribution now let's solve the mcq the investment is more sensitive to a change in sales volume or sales price for sales volume i will use what contribution so compare these two which is the most sensitive one sales price or sales volume so it's sales price so this is wrong sales price is more sensitive compared to sales volume okay guys for sales volume what we use we use contribution second the variable cost increased by 44 the investment will make a loss is this true or false is this true or false this is false this is false because you see for variable cost the sensitivity was 45 which means the profit would go to zero when variable cost increases by 45% 45% but it says if it increased by 44 so no investment will not make a loss because investment will be at zero when it reaches 45% third the investment sensitivity to incremental fixed cost is 550 is this true yes this is true this is true this is true okay this is true and margin of safety is 84.6 so you can work out margin of safety in terms of percentage and once you work out margin of safety in terms of percentage this is right so you can work out margin of safety in terms of percentage which is very much simple so once you work out you will get this answer and d is the right answer for margin of safety we need break even okay and for break even we are given with the fixed cost and i will divide this fixed cost with contribution per unit so this is 455 for how many units 650 units so once i'll divide 455 with 650 units the answer i'll get is 0.7 so once i divide with 0.7 so the break even answer that i will get here is 100 100 units okay 100 units now you can work out the mos it's simple 650 minus 100 divided by 650 and you will get the answer of 84.6% So I hope this is clear to all of you. Eighty-four point six percent. So I hope sensitivity is understood by everyone. Okay, and I've under I I just explained this very differently by solving a very small question. I'd explained sensitivity. I hope this is clear to all of you. Right? What's your feedback? Now. is sensitivity clear to all of you guys come on tell me sensitivity identifies the most critical variable but it assumes one variable will change it assumes one variable will change which is wrong which is wrong which is a very tough assumption actually multiple variable can change at the same time so simulation is what simulation assumes that multiple variable changes will occur simulation assumes multiple multiple variable changes will occur so sensitivity assumes one variable change whereas simulation assumes multiple changes will occur simulation is a technique through which we consider multiple variable changes so 
this is uh, the calculation part of simulation is out of our syllabus so don't be confused about that this is out of our syllabus so we don't have to uh, bother about that very much and uh, you just need to be uh, relaxed as well as for simulation no practical example rabia for simulation because simulation assumes multiple variable changes uh, and this is uh, out of our syllabus when it comes to calculation the theoretical thing that you need to remember is uh, this is a technique through which we assume that okay selling price will change variable cost will change fixed cost will change things will change at the same time so this is the assumption that we take whereas sensitivity assumed that there will be just one change at one time linear programming uh, very much now will be tested in section c when the graphs will be given to you so it is used for profit maximization and cost minimization there are general steps define variables and these variables basically are your products objective function is based on your contribution or your cost it all depends whether it's profit maximization or cost minimization constraint means limiting factors yes sensitivity calculations are included and i did the calculation rafe you didn't saw the previous question i did solve the entire calculation okay identify non negative constraints convert inequality to inequalities graph each equation identify the feasible area identify the points in the feasible area uh, there are two methods to find out the answer one is by inspection method one is by iso contribution line so the most famous is iso contribution line that is tested in the examination now let's quickly move towards a one more question and uh, that question relates to linear programming Okay, <clears throat> Abhisha, solving cost minimization is uh, it has never been tested yet in the paper, but uh, so you focus more on profit maximization, I would suggest. I'll over the class at eleven fifteen again. Okay. As I need to discuss one more question, so I want you people to be with me till the end. Okay, now <clears throat> this is a question of linear programming, and uh, I just uh, first quickly want to give you certain quick understanding based on this question. <clears throat> now. <clears throat> Let's start with this P part. Several months later, the demand for both cakes and cookies has increased significantly to 20,000 and 15,000 per month. Uh, so there are two products, cakes and cookies, right? So these are the products. However, the company has lost the contract with Incompass Health and after suffering from further shortages of supply. So this shortage of supply is what? It's a limiting factor <clears throat> shortage of supply of beta singer and its labor force 
the company has decided to stop making shakes at all okay so a company used to make three products but now the company has restricted itself to cakes and cookies only many students say me that in a linear programming question there are three products never possible in a linear programming question three products are never never possible okay so it says that uh, the variable x is being used to represent cakes and variable y represents cookies now this is a graph i just quickly want to give you a quick thought about this graph quickly listen what i'm doing you can see here if i just keep my steps and the graph together first we define variables so right now the variables are cakes and cookies one is on x axis and one is on y axis we construct objective function objective function is basically our contribution it represents our contribution okay so you can see here contribution is given here which is 2.6 will on on x plus 1.75 will on on y this is our objective function we need the optimum answer where we need to maximize our contribution we need to maximize our contribution which is normally the learning curve situation given in the paper okay then limiting factors limiting factors so see singer inequality this is less than this is less than this is less than less than means that the maximum available you have is 12000 for singer maximum available for beta is 12500 maximum available labor hours are 3000 that's it and these are limiting factors which are known as resource based what we call these tell me resource based what we say this tell me resource based okay so these are resource based you see further limiting factor here these and these are known as demand based what we call these demand based this means x cookies we cannot produce more than 20000 cookies we cannot produce and sell more than 20000 cookies we cannot produce and sell more than 15000 sorry sorry i beg your pardon we cannot sell more than 20000 cakes we cannot sell more than 15000 cookies this is demand based limiting factor demand based means the market has restricted your demand for example uh, the market says that you cannot sell more than 20000 or 15000 this is a demand based limiting factor and what is a resource based limiting factor it is very simple that the hours available or the kgs available are restricted to a certain amount okay so what we do is we convert these into inequalities as you saw less than or equals to like this we also have another one greater than or equals to this is a minimum inequality then we have non-negative constraints non-negative constraints so here you see these are your non-negative constraints which means your answer of cookies and cakes will never go in negative either you will produce zero x means cakes zero y means cookies or you will produce more than that because this inequality is what greater than this is greater than so this is showing you that the answer of x and y will never go in negative and you can see the graph itself is positive based because this is origin so either you will make zero cakes or more than zero either you will produce zero cookies or more than zero cookies so this is non-negative constraint are you all getting my point okay then what we do 
then we graph each equation and now keeping in mind constructive response question one would say that you will not be required to make the graphs because you cannot prepare graphs on spreadsheets so you will be provided with a graph as you can see right now so identify the feasible area feasible region Identify the feasible region. Okay, so okay, now, now, guys, listen. So where is the feasible area? Where is the feasible area? So it's very simple. You can see this is the demand limiting factor line. This is also demand limiting factor line. This is resource limiting factor line. This is also resource limiting factor line. And this is also resource limiting factor line. Okay. Now, where is the feasible area? As all the inequalities are of less than see less than less than less than less than less than so the most the most inner region is the feasible area most inner region so the feasible area in this question is a B C D this is the feasible area okay now this is the first point this is the second point this is the third point and this is the fourth point so it's o a b c d the feasible area okay now we need to find out the answer and as you see here we can find out the answer using iso method and inspection method this is most favorite examiner area examiner likes this method ISO line okay feasible area I was talking about you see all the inequalities are less than or equals to so the most inner region is the feasible area most inner region is the feasible area Okay, the most inner region because all are less than or equals to inequality. So the shortcut is to find out feasible area quickly when there are when all the inequalities other than non-negative constraint. Okay, when all the inequalities are less than or equals to the most inner reg region is the feasible area. Okay, now now it's very simple to figure out. This is the ISO line. You should know what ISO line is. Okay. This is the ISO line. It says explain what the line label C26 and 1.75 on the graph is and what area represented by OABCD. So what you have to write? This represents what? A contribution line contribution line that is 2.6 contribution on x 1.75 contribution in y that's it okay and what o a b c d means it's what it's a feasible area i'm sure you you should have that basic knowledge okay that is really required right now it's the feasible area so those who have the basic knowledge will quickly understand the technique that I'll explain them second explain how optimum production plan will be found 
using this line and identify optimum point from the graph okay now this is iso line this line you see is iso line and through this line we can find out the answer very easily very easily this is the contribution line so how will you find out the answer we we will scale up this line we will scale up this line that is if you see if i start increasing this line further just check the last point the line touches the last point the last point what do you think if i starts to increase this line in the upward direction like this if i start to increase this line in the upward direction like this the last point that line touches in the feasible area is the answer can you tell me which point you think this line will touch the last point yes the last point that you think the line will touch so if i just try to make the line straighter so yes you can see the last point that the line touches will be c c no it's not b it's c if you just increase this line in the upward direction just just don't change their slope just don't change the slope so the last point the line touches is c okay no it doesn't okay let me just tell you you have to see the last point the line touches whether the line is out of the feasible area but you what you have to see is last point the line touches so if you just scale up this line in the upward direction you will definitely find out the last point that it touches is point c and c is the answer so c is the optimum point c is the optimum point so you have to explain this it's a theoretical question explain this you will say when we scale up the line when we'll scale up the line so the last point the line will touch in the feasible area the last point the line will touch in the feasible area is the answer and that answer is c very easy to find out very easy to find out farooq uh, you can scale up by your hand using your hand using a scale you can judge you can just move a pen in the same direction of the line just move a pen just move your hand in the same direction with the line farooq you can figure out that okay it's simple method for rook you just have to scale up the line just move your hand along with this line gradient and see where it touches the last point okay let me let me as as this is as this is the best way to find out so i just saw you i you just seen here that this is how we scale up so you scale up the line the last point it touches it will be the answer okay so c is the answer so you have to explain you scale up the last point is the answer that is c simple okay through now the last shortcut i need to tell about shadow price in slack shadow price is the additional contribution earned if one unit of a scarce resource becomes available at its original cost so shadow price is the additional contribution right if one scarce resource becomes available 
slack is the amount by which resource is underutilized you should know the background knowledge behind this okay i'm not discussing the background knowledge i'm just solving the question and telling you the technique how to solve easily so remember million dollar points shadow price will be of a resource like labor like machine like material okay so shadow price will be calculated for all the lines where optimum answer falls where optimum answer falls so let's go back to the graph and let's just uh, clear things here do listen this is the last thing i'm discussing for today now the answer optimum is at c okay the answer optimum is at c so just tell me at this c point what are the two lines that are intersecting so two lines that are intersecting at c is labor line labor line and the demand line labor line and the demand line are you getting my point everyone labor and the demand line so is labor a resource is labor a resource yes so for labor you will work out the shadow price simple simple for labor you will work out the shadow price are you getting the technique remember the shortcut the lines where optimum answer falls and if on that point one is a resource line or even if both are the resource line if both are the resource line so you will work out shadow price but for that you should know what shadow price is okay so by looking at the graph you can figure out when to work out shadow price and when not to work out shadow price so see where is the optimum answer friends tell me where is the optimum answer is optimum answer at c yes at c do you see resource line of labor tell me yes or no yes and what is the other line the other is a demand line the other is a demand line and this is a labor line at this point okay so shadow price will be worked out for labor only not demand will be worked out for labor only not demand we work shadow price for resource so simple let's conclude when you see the lines where the optimum answer is if at those lines there are resources so you will work out the shadow price so we will work our shadow price for labor but not for demand because shadow price relates to resource and when there are two resource lines so you will work out shadow price for both the resource lines but if there is one resource line so we will work out just for one slack line where optimum answer does not exist whether those lines are resource or demand based whether those are resource or demand based you will work out slack simple so tell me the number of lines where optimum answer is not right now so it's a beta line where optimum answer is not it's demand for cookies line where optimum answer is not it's a single line where optimum answer is not so all these three lines are a one whether it's demand or it's resource you will work out slack slack is the under utilization so you work out slack for demand also you will work out slack in units in units unmatched demand units and for resource you will work out the slack for under utilized resource so million dollar point and here we are ending the session just listen for shadow price 
it relates to resource only lines where optimal answer falls so if at that point there are two resource lines so you work out shadow price for two if it's one resource line you work out shadow price for one clear lines where optimal answer does not falls does not falls so all the lines where optimal answer does not falls whether those are demand or resource lines you have to work out slack you have to work out slack friends friends last thing are you ready to answer by looking at the graph you can figure out the things L listen million dollar point quickly tell me i'm asking you ans for certain things for example graph is in front of you right now you can see the graph okay right now you can see the graph now this is a fresh graph in front of you this is the last test i'm doing quickly tell me by looking at the graph this is the million dollar technique the optimum point is at c is this clear the optimum point is at c is this clear come on tell me yes now you have learned a very good technique and that is at that is optimum point is at two lines yes one is demand and one is resource yes one is demand one is resource is this clear tell me you will work out shadow price for demand or resource demand or resource resource yes this means you have learned the technique by looking at the graph you can figure out where will be shadow price and where shadow price will not exist this is what i wanted to explain by looking at the graph you will figure out where shadow price will be and where it will not be understood okay the lines where optimum answer is not how many lines are there how many lines are there three so tell me will we work out slack for all these lines will you work out slack for all these lines yes or no yes or no yes you will work out slack for all these lines whether it's demand or whether it's resource whether it's demand or whether it's resource you will work out slack understood so by looking at the graph now you can figure out where shadow price will exist and where slack will exist yes or no is this technique good is this technique good tell me yes or no okay so i hope you like the million dollar point you like the million dollar technique and uh, i hope it's clear do watch the video thank you very much for today's session i hope today's session went well for all of you uh, i did said when you see the lines where the optimum point doesn't falls so on for all those lines you will work out slack right here for all those lines you will work out slack okay okay thank you very much for the session i hope you like the session give your feedbacks see you tomorrow in the next session with very important area of performance measurement thank you very much take care bye